What is your personal encounter with the paranormal, ghosts, aliens, sleep paralysis, glitch in the matrix, etc. My sister had a dream that she was kidnapped and being used as a sex slave in a random basement in an unknown location. Obviously it freaked her out, but that's not the crazy part. The next day her ex-boyfriend called her to ask if she was okay because he had a dream that she got abducted and nobody knew where she was. Parallel universe leakage. I really like this explanation for coincidences and shared dreams. Just recently, about two weeks ago, I was on my way to Home Depot when I arrive at this stoplight. After sitting there about 15 or so seconds, the light turns green. As soon as it did, I felt like I couldn't move at all. I don't know how to explain it, but it felt like if something was telling me to not go just yet. After about a second or two, this red Ford Explorer barrels through the intersection. Running the red at what must have been about 50 miles per hour, I don't know how much exactly, but it went ridiculous. Life fast. After the car sped through the intersection. Section. I could move again. Then again. I don't know what that something was. It was, but had it not been for that I would have probably not been able to tell you all this little story. Less story. Tory. Edit. Holy shit I did not expect to get this many upvotes. Upvotes. Thank you all for applying and blowing this up. This up. My mum was about to cross the road one day. The light turned green for pedestrians to walk. But my mum saw a lady across the street. Her eyes got really wide. Like something was wrong. And my mum just stared at her instead of crossing. A car sped through the lights. And just like your story, my mum wouldn't be here if she hadn't noticed that lady and stopped to stare at her. I wouldn't be, too, surprised if the old woman was staring at the vehicle thundering down the road. We joke about the girl who lives in our house. My wife insists that she was a victim of a fire in the schoolhouse in the 1870s that was on our property before the house was built. We've never seen her, but there is the occasional door locked or unlocked, or the air and attic light on, and so forth. Not a presence that is very strong or overbearing. There was one time though, when my wife was in the kitchen, and I was coming down the stairs, and we both heard you're a good girl, Dottie coming from the living room. Dotty is our dog. Trouble but a good girl to be sure. Apparently there is one more person besides my wife and I in the house who agrees. This is kinda cute. I want a ghost that is nice to my girls. One week after my great nun passed away, I, three at the time, told my mum that I had seen her in my bed and she had told me to tell my nan, her daughter, that she was okay now. I don't think I could even comprehend death. So spooky stuff. What was the response after you told your nan? I'm unsure, but there had to have been some relief alongside crippling fear haha. <laughs> it's not something you expect a young child to come out with. I don't know if this was some weird coincidence, but when I was 14 I was staying the night at my friend's house and we decided to sleep in the guest room instead of her own bedroom. She kept telling me she thought the room was haunted, and I thought she was just trying to wind me up but, just before she went to sleep she mentioned it again. At that moment, everything suddenly went really cold and the radio randomly switched on, and started making weird static noises, even though nothing touched it. My friend refused to sleep in there ever again. Growing up my sister and I were good friends with our neighbor, Matt, who had a dog, Molly. Molly ran away one day so the three of us set out into the nature preserve behind our houses to look for her. Matt's brother, Chris, set out separately. In the preserve is an old dam slash mill from the 1700s that is rumored to be haunted. When we got to the mill we saw Chris and the dog on the other side of the river, maybe 30 yards away. Matt, I got her. In bringing her home Chris yelled. But something didn't feel right. And the three of us gave each other that look. We headed home knowing Chris would be a bit behind us, since he'd have to go a mile or two out of his way to cross the bridge. When we got home there was Matt's mom and the dog. She was under the porch the whole time she said. A little while later Chris showed up, having never even gone into that part of the woods. Plot twist, you saw the real Chris and Molly in the woods. The ones who showed up later took their places. Okay Stephen King. I was trapped in a recurring dream over an extensive period of time. 
where I had to get out of a skyscraper. The top floors were more research based, while the bottom ones were centered around reception with things like art and sculptures on display. For a decent portion of time, I couldn't escape the building. But every additional time I had a dream. My previous self guided me past the place of my initial mistake. By the time I got out of the building, it felt like I had decades into the future. I had this dream for months. It was the exact same every time. Except I got slightly further to escaping. I don't know why I would dream such a detailed place. But I remember everything about too. In my hometown in northern FL. We would sometimes get a thick fog that was terrible to navigate. I was always told by my grandparents that if I ever saw confederate soldiers walking in that fog. Keep my head down and move along even if they talk to me. Rare advice for the south. As for Yankee soldiers. I was to nod and point them in a direction if they said they were lost. And if I ever ran into a woman in a white dress named Caroline. Don't tell her your name and excuse yourself before she touches you. Wow that's creepy any more details? Like what will happen if she touches you or you tell her your name? I don't remember all the details. But I was told that I wouldn't be able to find my way home if I talked to her. She was the ghost of a confederate soldier's adult daughter. And one of the neighborhood kids disappeared for a couple days after she said she spoke to her. I don't remember exactly why she took the children though. But several kids did go missing during the fogs. When I was little, maybe 5, I would walk into my parents bedroom to crawl into bed with them. Many times when walking into their room, I would see a young girl in a white dress standing at the foot of their bed. I would be paralyzed with fear, but being young I don't think I understood what I was seeing. I would take agonizing steps forward until I could crawl into bed and then cover myself completely in their blankets. She never moved, spoke or acknowledged my presence. She was just there. Your parents should have been coming to sleep in your bed. Mine isn't scary in the slightest, but I like to think of it as a weird glitch in the matrix. One summer afternoon, when I was younger, my family heard the music of an ice cream truck coming down our road. Ice cream trucks never come down our road. We ran outside and placed our orders and expressed our astonishment to the woman inside. Really? She said. I come down this road every week. Ah. Uh, Sure you do we all responded. She drove off. And we never saw her again. I'm sure it was just a mistake on her part. But I like to think there's an alternate reality where we get ice cream trucks down our street every week. One night I was going to sleep and all of a sudden I start sweating profusely. I try to get up and turn on the ack and I could not move from my bed. I was confused and a bit scared I tried to shout to my sister in the next room over I couldn't talk either. At this point is when I saw a dark figure in the corner watching me. It felt like years until the silence broke it muttered in a distorted voice you are not safe at this point I could hear my heart pounding like it was in my ear. Next thing I knew the figure moved across the room and to the foot of my bed. It stared into my soul and then I could move. I was soaked in sweat and that night I did not sleep. To this day I have never had sleep paralysis. After that and I still wonder am I really safe. I was plagued by chronic sleep paralysis throughout my teen years, but I never had hallucinations. This sounds terrifying. First and foremost I'm a skeptic, so I'm not going to over dramatize this. So apologies if it isn't that entertaining, but I like to share it. My great grandmother always said throughout her life that if there was something after death, she would give a sign. She died alone in a nursing home. And after a very long day we all returned to her family home with her husband, my great grandfather. We stayed with him that night, so that he wasn't alone. Long story short, we all went to bed. Around midnight. Not long after that. The phone starts ringing. There's no one on the other end. This happens a few times. In the UK you can dial 1471 to trace the call. The call was untraceable. This happened a few times before it ended. This, as a skeptic, was the first time it considered something to be unexplainable. It brought great comfort to my family. So paranormal or not, we like to think that it was my great grandmother saying this is the only sign I could send and I'm okay. That's awesome. Had something similar happen shortly after my grandfather passed. Grandma's house phone rang a few times I picked it up. 
After few seconds of silence someone on the other end says my name is so and so and everything is going to be okay. Then hangs up. Nothing on caller ID and no trace with reverse phone number lookup either. Nobody in the house recognized the name. It was strange but comforting because the last thing grandpa said was looks like I'm going fishing with Jesus now. Apostrophe. My mum's experience with what she thinks was a ghost. She went outside around 10pm for a cigarette years ago and saw a very elderly woman walking up our neighbor's back stairs to their veranda. Mum said she wanted to ask if she was alright. It was very rare for our neighbors to have visitors that late. They were also elderly. But mum said she completely lost her voice and felt stunned. Though she couldn't look away. She ended up getting out a hello and the woman just disappeared. The next morning mum made a joke to our neighbors asking why she wasn't invited over for their nightcap with their visitor and they very casually replied oh so you've now seen our ghost too they were excited over it and not at all scared berry neighbor says an elderly lady follows elwin his wife everywhere and they feel pure comfort around her but their own children and grandchildren are frightened by the lady on the stairs when they stay my wife of 22 years died earlier this year she was every bit the happy homeworker. Every day after I went to work and she would make our bed like a soldier in basic training. It had to be just perfect including the massive pile of throw pillows we had to unload every night and stack on a small couch in our room. During the last few months, when she became bedbound, I of course had to take over all the cleaning duties, which did not include a daily making of the bed. So the pillows remained stacked on the couch for months without moving. The night she died I was awoken by the sound of a fan in our room being knocked over. I turned on the light and the pile of throw pillows which had not moved in months fell into the floor and knocked over the fan that was about 2 feet away from the couch. I piled them up back on the couch and got back into bed. I checked the time to see how long I had been asleep. It was to 12 in the morning. My wife says February 12th. I've been married for far less than you had. But the thought of her passing away is too much to handle. Please be well. Yes this. My heart literally hurts. Okay here's a benign one. When I was a kid I was playing with a puppet in my brother's old bedroom. There was literally nothing in the bedroom since we were renovating. Just floors. I fed the puppet a fruit loop. Opened its mouth and the fruit loop was gone. Searched everywhere but the damn thing ate a fruit loop I guess. I've had a similar experience. I was only a few years old and had seen a lot of magic shows with people just putting things in bags and nothing being inside the bags after closing them. I tried said trick with a pillowcase and tried to make some marbles disappear. So I repeated as I saw in the magic shows and nothing was in the pillowcase. Even after shaking it. After I almost cried, my mother took it and pulled out said marbles with ease. Still don't know what happened there. One day I was alone in the backyard at my boyfriend's house, swinging on the porch swing, when I saw his black lab slowly walking towards me, eventually she made her way to me, and sat down right in front of my legs, so I stopped swinging. She looked me in the eyes and all of a sudden I got this overwhelming feeling, that she was going to die, she seemed sad, a little scared and confused, I got the feeling that she needed comfort and reassurance so I sat there with her and stroked her ears and fur, telling her how good she was and that everything would be okay, telling her that she was loved and to not be afraid. After a few minutes she seemed to feel better and began to wander off again. I told my boyfriend that he needed to pet his girl and give her kisses, and he did. I didn't fill him in on my experience with her just moments before. The next day he called me crying. His mother had accidentally ran over his dog when she was backing out of the garage and unfortunately she was so injured that they decided to put her down. This isn't the first time this kind of thing happened to me, and it has happened to me with people too. I don't know why I can sense others death and don't really know what to do with this kind of info. His dog's death struck a chord with me though, because she was young and healthy and she sensed her death coming too. Most animals and people are surprised by their endings. That I have witnessed anyway. Once I ate at Applebee's and both the food and the service was good at the same time. Truly a paranormal experience. Are you absolutely sure it was really an Applebee's? Oh gosh. What is the glitch in the Matrix chili story? I need to find it. It's epic. 
Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos.